Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, today we are doing another battery review. That's right, we got something different here. We have a 100 amp hour battery behind me. And I know what some of you are thinking, that battery looks a lot bigger than the last 100 amp hour battery that we tested. You might even think it's about the size of that 200 amp hour battery that we tested a few months back. And it is exactly the same physical size is that last 200 amp hour battery. But it's only 100 amp hours, but it's 24 volts. 25.6 volts, exactly. And that's why it's only 100 amp hour capacity, because of higher voltage. It's still a lot more storage, a lot more battery capacity, and we're gonna put it to the test. All right, do you guys remember this tool right here? Yep, this is that battery capacity tester that we used in the last battery video. And we're gonna use it in this video as well. We're gonna get ready to hook it up and we're gonna test the capacity of this battery. All right, and as you can see, as we hook up the load tester, you can see we have 26.7 actual volts in our 25.6 volt battery. 24 is the nominal rating. So we are gonna go ahead and start turning these knobs to get the test started. All right, as you can see, it still held the memory from the last battery test we did, the 101.81 amp hours, but we're gonna go ahead and reset that now. Zero everything out. And now we're gonna begin our test. Now, if you guys recall, two knobs on here. The top knob is our course current, so we'll start turning that up. The fan begins to move and we start pulling load. All right, so we've got that at 152 watts. Let's turn this one up. Try to get it to 175. Oh, 182, I don't want to go too far. 180. How about right there? We'll just let this test run its course. 6.88 amps approximately 180 watts. All right, guys, now I am expecting that this test is gonna take some time, but let's talk for a moment on why you would want a 24 volt battery instead of a 12 volt battery. Well, the higher the voltage you use, you can actually use a smaller gauge wire because there's less resistance. When you use a higher voltage, you will actually draw less amps Whatever load you are trying to run will actually draw less amperage through the wires the higher the voltage you go. For instance, let's say you were running the same 1000 watt load, but trying to power it with 12 volts, it would have a higher amp rate. Powering it with 24 volts would use lower amperage because it has higher voltage. And if you went to 36 volts or even 48 volts, you would again drop that amperage which means you're not gonna build as much heat in the wires, you can use a smaller gauge wire. The voltage will flow easier over further distances at a higher voltage. Think about it, when power comes into your house, it comes into your house at 110, 120 volts, but it comes to your pole at a much higher voltage than that. It comes to the transfer station at a much higher voltage than that, and they step it down. So you don't have to use as large of a conductor to get the same amount of power or wattage through a line. There's a lot of other advantages and we've already talked about the lithium iron phosphate technology. This is probably one of the best and most safest technologies on the market right now. All right guys, so this battery we're testing today is Redodo. Now, Redodo reached out to me and asked me if I would do a review on their battery and it just so happens that I've got a project that I could use this battery for. We'll get into that a little bit later. So I agreed. Oh, and Austin here just reminded me to tell you guys that Redodo is not paying me to make this video. They did offer me the batteries and they did not charge me for the batteries, but I did receive them free of charge. But I was very clear to them that I was going to do an honest review. We're just doing a test. You guys are going to see whether it passes the test or fails the test. But I guess technically I'm supposed to tell you that I did not pay for these batteries. They were provided to me free of charge but I'm still not being paid, technically. Smashing baby! Now, lithium iron phosphate technology is not new. Guys, this has been around since the 90s. It is extremely safe, extremely stable, and extremely long-lasting. 
Lithium iron phosphate doesn't get the degradation that you see with like nickel cadmium or, or other battery chemistries that have a cobalt base to them. You know, typically an NMC battery would have a cobalt component to it. And that comes with some intricacies. And that's what you're going to see in maybe a lot of your handheld power tools and even in a lot of EV cars nowadays. And although they have the ability to put out a lot of power in a short period of time, the degradation over time is not so good. When you've got that cobalt contribution in a battery chemistry, it does increase your chances of a thermal runaway. And that's why you've seen things out there where battery packs can catch on fire, cell phones can catch on fire, cars can catch on fire. But people can fuse that chemistry with lithium iron phosphate. By removing the cobalt, you stabilize the battery considerably. Lithium iron phosphate does not catch on fire. It is extremely stable, and you also get a better lifespan out of it. In addition, the bond between cobalt and oxygen is not as strong as the bond between phosphorus and oxygen, and this leads to an increased lifespan. They can also endure more abuse, higher temperature ranges, even lower temperature ranges. All in all, it's just a better battery chemistry. The downside to removing that cobalt from the chemistry is that the batteries tend to be a little bit larger, a little bit bulkier, a little bit heavier, which is why they don't use them in vehicles. But when you're looking at a stationary system, you don't need to be so lightweight. And that's why these are very, very popular in off-grid systems for your home and even RVs, because you've got a little bit more space for batteries. You're not trying to power the whole car on it, just some lights and stuff like that. That's where the lithium iron phosphate really comes in strong. And in comparison to lead acid batteries, you're still gonna get a huge amount of weight savings using this chemistry. It weighs way less and has much higher storage capacity, which we've, we've tested that in the past and we've seen that to be true. And although this test is going on right now, I'm assuming that we'll prove that to be true in this case as well. Now, Rododo says that the fact that it's 24 volt makes it more stable than 12 volt and you get double the capacity of a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. So this is a 2.56 kilowatt hour battery and it has a 100 amp hour BMS. And that BMS can support a max load of 100 amps continuous, whether it be discharging or charging. The cells are brand new, great. Dodo claims that you can get 4,000 cycles within a 10 year period of time, which is five times longer than a typical lead acid battery. And it only weighs 48.06 pounds, which is about one third the weight of a comparable lead acid battery setup. And they also provide you with a five year warranty and lifetime support. And there's still quite a bit of versatility in here. You can run these in multiple battery situations. So you can run just the one battery at 24 volts, which is considered a one P situation. You can run a two S two P situation if you want to run two batteries or four batteries, or six, or eight, in a 2S2P, 2S3P, and 2S4P configurations, up to 48 volts with an eight battery system. So you'd be running parallel series connections with eight batteries. So you would run four sets of two batteries in series, and then all paralleled together to get your 48 volts. That would give you over 20,000 watt hours of use. Be great for a home backup battery system. Right, the battery comes with over protection, over discharge protection, over current protection, short circuit protection, and a built-in high temp cutoff. That's where that BMS at the top comes in, guys. That little computer at the top of there basically monitors everything and makes sure it stays safe. If it sees something that's wrong, it disconnects to protect the battery and whatever device you're running. All right, and you guessed it. If you're running a 24 volt battery, you need a different charger than your 12 volt. So luckily they supplied me with a 29.2 volt, 20 amp battery charger. Yeah, when they reached out to me and asked if I'd use these batteries and make a review on them, I said, I'd love to, but you're gonna have to send me a charger as well because I don't have a charger for that. So they did. Now, what's really nice is the very well-built charger, all aluminum case with heat sinks. It even has a handle on top to carry it with, which is pretty convenient. 
The thing I really like about this charger is it comes with the Anderson connector on it and the battery came with the Anderson connector lead that I could attach to it. So when I wanna charge the battery, I just simply plug the charger into the wall, snap this into the battery connector, and it just starts charging. Now, this is a smart charger. You see there's, there's a light on the end of it and there is a little meter there and it will tell you when it's charging, when it's fully charged. So it takes all the guesswork out of it. Okay, size. This battery is eight and a half inches tall, 8.2 inches wide and 21 inches long. So it can fit in most RV type storage spaces or neatly on a shelf someplace out in the garage. The battery terminals are M8 and they are a silver plated copper terminal, which has a lower internal resistance, which ensures a high current discharge performance. All right, enough on specifications. Let's look back at the capacity test and see where we're at. All right, see, we're still drawing 6.98 amps. We've got 3.49 amp hours used up, 91.3 left to go. All right, guys, so we're going to let this run its course, and we'll keep checking back in to see how it does. All right, guys, checking in on it again. It's been... But 1.47 hours, and we've used 12.54 amp hours. Still got a ways to go. All right, guys, now we are into our test. 10 hours, and we've used 69.76 amp hours. Still got some ways to go. Still at 25.7 volts. All right, 12 hours, 43 minutes in, 87.59 amp hours used. It looks like we're going to make it. Looking at the watt hours, we're still not quite there yet. All right, guys, and there we go. Looks like 102.62 amp hours used. It took 14 hours and 54 minutes before the battery reached disconnect. Hi right, guys, I am super pleased to see that it passed the capacity test and everything went very smooth. Now, I'm not gonna cut this one open like I did on the last battery review because that's already been done before. I also wanna add that in the box, we also got like an owner's manual type packet with lots of information with specs on the battery, most of which I've already gone over with you, but there's a lot of cool details in here and it's a very professional clean setup. Like I said, we're not doing the teardown because there are plenty of videos on YouTube already of these batteries being taken apart and disassembled. So I don't think I need to do that with this. I don't want to compromise this case because the application that we're going to be using it for, I want to make sure it stays sealed and clean and so on and so forth. Because like I said, lithium is not a new technology. It's been around for a long time. It's extremely safe. If you have any fears about lithium, iron, phosphate technology or chemistries in a battery, Man, let them go. This is a really, really good, safe alternative. It's way better than lead acid, a lot more cycle life. Yeah, the battery prices are a little bit more expensive, but you get so much more life out of them. Uh, you know, lead acid batteries are pretty much dead except for in engine starting applications. This particular battery is not ideal for engine starting. Now, it'll run like a trolling motor on a boat or something like that but you wouldn't want to try to start a gasoline car engine with something like this. It's, the way the BMSs are set up, it's just not designed for it. Now there are some other lithium battery companies on the market that are coming out with starter capable type systems, but this is more of a deep cycle type system, two different applications. Now currently this battery is available on Redoto's website for about $449, which is actually a really good deal. When you look at the last 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery that we tested, it was in the mid to high $200 range. So this is twice the capacity for a little bit less than twice the price. So dollar per watt hour, this is a really good deal. Redoto has built a great reputation on building a quality product. And I have no reason to doubt that. It seems like it's really well built and it's a good option for many, many systems.
Now, Rododo has provided me with an affiliate link. So if you purchase one of these batteries or two of these batteries or eight of these batteries, hey, hey uh, you will actually be able to get a discount on them uh, using the link that's in the description below. And like I said, there is an affiliate commission there, so it does help the channel as well. Helps me bring you more videos such as this in the future. All right, so we're gonna get this uh, capacity tester unhook from here, get it back on the charge and get it charged back up to about 50% charge. That's the way they come. That's actually where they differ a little bit from a lead acid battery. Typically with lead acid, you want to store them at 100% charge and keep them there. Lithium, you want to discharge them around 50% or so when you put them in storage, and then they will stay at that for quite some time. So I put this on charge to bring it to a full charge before doing this test. So we would get an honest capacity discharge rate on it but now it's completely dead and we don't really want to store them dead either. So I'm going to charge it up for a couple hours, get it into that 50% range, put it back in the box until the next project. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I encourage you to stay tuned because there is more coming. In fact, the upcoming project that I've got planned for these is going to require more than one. We can do a 24 volt 200 amp, or are we going to do a 48 volt, 100 amp? You guys stay tuned for the next project and we'll see. But until the next time, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, keep those engines running. Very shagadelic. Smashing baby! Smashing baby!